Hello, hi everyone, Christian Cake to Habit, and this is The Magnet First Night. Now, The Magnet is a visual novel point and click mix in which you try to help this girl called Teddy survive a pretty horrible apocalypse. Now, let's go right in and uh, check it out together The First Night, which is kind of the intro in the world, is available on ish.io right now for Windows and Mac OS. New game. I uh, click anywhere on the screen to advance the story. Okay. First night. The sweat on her brow is making the mask stick uncomfortably to Teddy's face. Yes, she's wearing a kind of a creepy mouse mask. The mud underfoot swallows her feet so that each step is a chore and accompanied by a sucking sound. The empty window from the towering buildings on either stair, on either side stare down like giants waiting for their next meal. And dawn is approaching fast, way too fast. Teddy knows that she will have to find shelter soon, but every building for miles has been some kind of factory or warehouse. Well, fuck, what do I do now? Um, let's say we should keep walking. Teddy picks up the pace. She refuses to give up. Teddy bears herself up for not leaving this city through a suburb. They can be harder to get around in, but the abandoned houses always have beds. The only downside to the suburb is that she might run into the previous owner of the house decomposing in a corner somewhere. Still, a bed is a bed. Teddy looks at the crumbling brick faces around her. This day will not be comfortable. There is no bed for her here. God damn it. This is not good. Not good at all. She knows that the horrors will be out soon, and once they are awake, she has to be out of sight. Life has been hell since the horrors showed up. No one knows where they came from. They just turned up one morning and started murdering indiscriminately. That was several years ago. Since then, the world has gone to absolute shit. There is no safety anymore, no parents, no home. The only thing that Teddy can do is keep moving in the dark, keep walking if she wants to stay alive. And Teddy intends to stay alive. She is safe for now in the dark. The horrors are completely blind to the darkness. She has seen enough of them to know their weakness. Probably their only one. She looks up. The sky is getting a rosy tint off in the distance that worries her. So even though there are none of them around, she picks up the pace. Maybe she'll be able to move a bit by daylight, she thinks. Maybe this time it won't be that bad. Just run. Teddy pushes against the thought. She She's known better than most. Uh, she known? She known? She knows better than most that there is no way around them, that if you are spotted, they attack and they do so ruthlessly. It is always bad. Teddy starts to run, making too much sound as if uh, as she does so. They may not be able to see in the dark, but they can certainly hear, and it is no longer all that dark. Her mind is spinning. She has to find somewhere, and soon the approaching dawn scares her. Because, you know, if they can see her, you know, morning is not an ally. She's almost sure that she'll have to sleep out in the open, something she hasn't done in... ever. When she spots it, she turns a corner and stops dead in her tracks. She can see an open door leading into a welcoming darkness within a little way off from where she's standing. Oh, thank God! Teddy runs double speed over to the door and ducks inside, just as the first rays of daylight kiss the face of the building. Her head is reeling as she makes her way inside. The panic has her breathing heavy and her muscles aching. She tries to steady herself, to take in her new surroundings, which look awful. Teddy didn't have a lot of time to survey the building from the outside, but now that she is inside, she realizes just how much of a dump this place is. There is trash thrown everywhere and dark mall has started moving up the walls. It seems to Teddy that this place might even have been abandoned before the world went to hell. 
but the worst offender is the stench, which was mercifully absent outside. It is nothing short of overpowering, combining something close to rotten eggs and yeast together into a mix that makes her eyes water. This... I can't sleep here. Teddy looks outside, where the light has really started to stream in, illuminating the world in the cold light of early morning. She shakes her head, cause she can't go anymore. Too much light. No. <sighs> this will have to do. Teddy looks around the room trying to get her bearings. She's in a small room like an entrance or hallway. The place has seen better days, with most of it scattered in various types of garbage. The only light is coming from the double door she came in from. The windows in, uh, in either door has long since the window in either door has long the windows have since been broken and there is glass in the concrete on the concrete floor. Teddy shakes her head again. This place is a dump, but it is just for one night. I should look around, get to know my home for the day. Okay, so this is, you know, the 3D part, the point and click part, where you kind of go around, and you can explore the area with some, you know, a well, few points of interest. What happened to Anna? Baron Samedi? Hmm. To the survey is a rubble of this place. It seems so random. But while looking around, she suddenly focuses on something. It's a chair standing alone against the wall. Is it this chair? No, probably not at all. Teddy looks at the chair, at first thinking nothing of it. There are at least a dozen or so of them stacked in here. But as she approaches the chair, she gets an uneasy feeling like she has seen it before. <sighs> Get yourself together. It's a chair. It makes, uh, it takes a moment, it takes her a moment to realize why this chair is making her so uncomfortable. What is, uh, what is it about the chair that is making her uneasy? That's... Teddy looks at it again, and yeah, it is just like the ones she used to have at home before the horrors came. Before the world went to shit. Teddy stands for a while transfixed, as if she's waiting for the chair to jump up and attack her. But the chair is not the enemy, the memories are. She can't help the flashes from flooding her mind's eye. Her family sitting down for dinner, her mom placing the chairs on the table to clean, a birthday party, an errand fight around the table. The flashes come fast and hard and Teddy can do nothing but stand there, staring at a stupid fucking chair. She has spent too much time trying to forget trying to stave back the memories of what used to be. That is how you survive. It is the only way that you survive. Teddy can feel her chest tighten. She's at war with herself. Will she allow the memories to win? To win? I guess that's supposed to be like a question. No. The hiss comes low and intense from deep within her. It is enough. She is broken out of her spiral. Now is not the time, Teddy tells herself. She turns around, facing the rest of the room. There is the rest of the room to check. Oh, come on. That, okay, that can be tweaked a little bit. Alright. Because, you know. There's something to check. Check. Doubt. Okay. There is moss growing on the side of the oil drum, which seems to be empty. Some of the edges of the moss has started to go brown. Teddy passively wonders if that could be a sign that the season is changing, but she doesn't know. Teddy has long ago lost track of how long she has been on the run. She used to try and keep count of the months so that she could know when her birthday was. When she realized that no one would be there to celebrate for her, she stopped caring. The only thing she keeps track of now is what reason it is and what types of food she can get from nature. What season it is, okay. I guess this is the only bit of nature I'm going to find here. Teddy gestures at the moss, even though there is no one there to whom she is talking. Even so, Teddy giggles and turns away. There are other things in here that need to be investigated. 
All right, all right, Teddy. We have this is really, it's really kind of creepy. Teddy walks over to a shopping cart that has been hazardly stashed in the corner of the room. Yet another thing that seems like it should belong in a place like this. All right, what do we have here? Nothing answers her but dead silence. Not that she had expected any different. Her own voice has become the only companion that she has anymore, the only sound she ever hears. She talks to herself out of habit more than anything else, as a way of breaking the constant silence that hangs over everything. They l took everything when they arrived, friends, family, home, everything. But after a while, when you have been on the run, you start to notice the little things they took. The things you didn't notice while grieving. The horse took the sound, leaving the world cold and silent. There is no music, no laughter, just you talking to yourself. Teddy shakes her head and focuses back on the shopping cart. She finds discarded wrappers from candy bars, a blanket that has grown a nasty mold and paint canisters filled with dried paint. She looks at the wrappers longly. longingly. She used to love candy, anything sweet really. She would beg her parents for it every time they... No. Teddy shakes her head. Again, she really likes to shake her head. There is nothing for her down the, that train of thought. Stay in a moment. Muttering to herself brings a moment of respite. A moment of truth. She turns away from the shopping cart, disgusted with herself. She needs to move on. There must be other things in this room. Alright. Okay, so there are two doors here. Let's see here. When Teddy tries to open the door to this room, it catches on something, only slightly opening. What the? Teddy tries to peek inside from the somewhat open door, but it's hard to tell the, uh, what is in there as something is blocking the view. She tries to push against the door again, but there is no give. Annoyed, she stands back and tries to kick the door, but still it stands firm. <sighs> okay then. Teddy takes a couple of steps back and readies herself. This will be unpleasant. Three, two, one. With that she lunges at the door with all her might. The door makes a painted uh, sound accompanied by a loud screech, but gives, all, uh, gives away all the same. Teddy quickly realizes her mistake and takes a quick look outside. The sun would have attracted any of the horrors if there were any outside. She holds her breath for a moment, waiting for one to come. But none do. Exhaling, Teddy looks back at the door, which is now fully ajar. It suddenly doesn't surprise her that this door was jammed. The room she is looking at is absolutely full of crap. Stepping inside, she notices that there is stuff piled on top of stuff. Teddy wonders, not for the first time, what this place used to be because it is seemingly more and more like a literal dump with each second. Teddy looks around, the stuff that filled the room floor to ceiling is thrown in no particular order. There are old microwaves on top of broken armchairs and moth-eaten sheets uh, draped over open refrigerators. Why? It is the only question she can think to ask. This wouldn't have made sense even before the world went to hell. What was the purpose of a place like this? Just random crap storage? <sighs> this entire building is giving her a headache. And not just from the smell. She wishes she could make some sense of any of it. Tired, Teddy closes the door and turns away from the room. Well, I guess, I mean, maybe there was, you know, old storage, kind of. Teddy approaches the double doors leading beyond the first room with some trepidation. She doesn't know what is beyond this point and not knowing scares her. Is it safe? Has she checked everything? Does she know where she is? She feels her belly rumble as if a beast has settled in there. Teddy closes her eyes takes a deep breath and runs to the checklist in her head, 
It helps to keep organized, she tells herself. Come on, Teddy, you know this place. What was behind the other door? Alright, let's see, a sauna, a mess beyond belief, the source of the smell, or nothing, it lit outside. Well, it didn't look like it was leading outside, so I'm gonna say a mess beyond belief. Oh yeah, there's a total shit show in there. Now that she thinks about it, she realized that this was not where the smell was coming from. Still, it was messy as all hell. Enough of that. Teddy squares her shoulders, trying to tame the beast that has taken lodging in her stomach. Whatever is beyond those doors can't be that bad, she tells herself. But it doesn't help. She hesitates. Is there something she's forgetting? Uh, what was it about that chair? It was broken. It was a throne fit for a king. It reminded it remind her of home. That, that was the problem. Teddy quickly recoils at the thought of home. Best not to think about it. Best to focus on the door in front of her. Okay. <sighs> Just one more. She knows that she is stalling, but the list is calming her down like the beast in her belly slowly being lulled to sleep. What was in the shopping cart? Uh, four horsemen of the apocalypse? Uh, no, candy wrappers and crap. Teddy mouth waters at the thought of the candy that she missed out on. Even if those wrappers were several years older than her. Teddy smiles to herself. That was the list. That was everything. She feels certain that she knows everything that is in this room and none of it poses any danger to her. Taking a deep breath, she opens the door and walks into the next room. Walking into this room answered any questions that he had about where that smell was coming from. The stench is foul. So bad that Teddy almost turns around and walks straight out the door. However, she knows better than that. Something could be lurking in here. And it is better to know. Still, she wishes that she didn't have to go further into this place where the very air seems to be assaulting her. There is no light in this room whatsoever, so Teddy has to feel her way around until her eyes adjust to the darkness. Teddy takes another step into the darkness, willing herself not to freak out. It takes just a while for her to get used to the darkness, Thanks in no small part of the fact that her eyes keep watering due to the smell. When she finally does, she's confused. She's standing in a rather large, elongated room with red steel pillars every new feet, every few feet. The room is filled with all kinds of all kinds of crap, ranging from old fridges, sporting logos of soft drinks to discarded furniture that has seen better days. Altogether. The place gives off the air of having been long abandoned. Well, isn't this nice? Her words echo to the hall and bounce back to her as though ghosts are mirroring her sentiment. To the horrendous smell and the crap littered all over the place, Teddy has a hard time keeping her spirits up. I guess I better check out, check this out as well. Teddy takes another step into the room without enthusiasm or much hope. Okay, let's see what we got here. The sight of the cabinet immediately makes Teddy excited. For a second, she's convinced that this is the kind of place that people kept. Uh, this is the kind of places that people kept their food in. Oh come on! The exclamation was the exclamation was a bit louder than Teddy was initially expecting it to be, and she looks around nervously. No one is there. Still. She chastises herself for getting her hopes up. Wait, is that a switch? A Mac keyboard? An iMac? And whatever this tablet is? Huh. Why would there be anything useful in this damn closet? The only thing here are some stupid electronics. Teddy surveys the assorted wires and things in the closet. The ironic thing is that some of the things in here are things that she would have been very excited about finding. Teddy re recognized the gaming console in there and thinks back on a time when that would have meant a lot to her. A tool to alleviate boredom. <laughs> the laugh is so hollow and humorless. 
but it feels good to let it out. The truth is that Teddy doesn't remember what it is like to be bored. The thing about fighting to stay alive is that you really don't have time to be bored. Every moment is tense, every moment is a struggle. Even when things are relatively quiet, there's always the worry. Teddy worries about her next meal, she worries about whether the horse will ever catch her, and she worries for the simple pleasure of worrying. Nah, none of these things could bring her any joy anymore, but God does she miss boredom. She misses it so much. That's a little disturbing. What do we have? Clothes? Teddy stops dead in her tracks as she spots laundry hanging. Her heart sinks. If someone is here, this would complicate things. Teddy stands completely still for a moment, listening to the silence that hangs in the room. Hello? No answer. Teddy stands still for a moment, acutely aware of how vulnerable she is in this moment. Is anyone there? Once again, the darkness answers with nothing but silence. Teddy stands still for another moment, every part of her clenching up tight, clench up tight. Eventually, she lets her guard down. If someone was here, she would have heard. She walks over to the clothing, expecting, inspecting it. Part of her is incredulous. Incredulous as to why anyone would hang clothes here, clearly the smell would ruin them. She holds a shirt up to her nose. It is bone dry and absolutely weaking. This must have been here for a while. Teddy steps back. She needs to check out the rest of the room and this was not an encouraging start. Great. Okay. More paint stuff. Oh. Teddy stands for a moment not quite able to place the thing in front of her. Is it a bed? Nah, not quite. For, uh, for one thing, it has wheels. For another, the mattress, which is overgrown with mold, is at an odd angle. It's uh, the words on the top of her, uh, tip of her tongue, fascinatingly close. It's a, uh, it's a gurney. The clouds surrounding her thought process lift as she finds the word. However, with the word comes a lot of questions. What would a gurney be doing here? The rest of everything makes uh, makes some sort of odd sense, but this? Teddy stares at it for a second, trying to wrap her head around it. These are supposed to be in hospitals, right? The silence that follows the question doesn't give anything away. Teddy turns away from the thing, trying to ignore all the burning questions that she might never get an answer to. Huh. Home sweet home. Right. Huh? Why can't she go... Oh, she can kind of go like that. Huh. At the very back of the room, Teddy finds what could be, a, what could be described as an apartment. A lousy one, certainly, but an apartment all the same. A makeshift mandress has been set up with an upturned box acting as a bedside table, and a board with an old office chair has been placed into the corner as a dining table. Huh, so someone has been living here. Recently, maybe? The whole scene is kind of cozy in a weird way. If it wasn't for the smell, Teddy would have even liked the place. Teddy walks over to the bed, inspecting it. There's no dust on the covers, and there are some provisions stashed by the dining table. Someone lives here, and whoever it is can't have left long ago. This worries Teddy. The last thing she needs is some sort of complication with an angry survivor. Teddy looks longingly at the provisions. She's so damn hungry. Okay, so what do they have here? Some cigarettes? Coffee? And... A can of fish? I think? Her mouth is watering and she has a hard time focusing on anything else. It takes a moment of hard concentration to get herself back on track. The person who lives here... What happened to them? The sun is out and the horrors are not here. So either the res resident got caught out there or they're dead. Either way, 
that they will be gone by dusk, so this is not going to be her problem. She looks back at the food, tempted to steal something. Who would notice? Hmm. You know what? I'm hungry, so yeah, survival of the fittest. Let's take something. Teddy takes a can of baked beans from beneath the table. Whoever lives here won't mind, she reasons. Teddy looks back over her shoulder. She's unsure of whether or not there is much else to see here. I could go to sleep. Go to sleep or keep exploring? Well, I think we've seen... Let's just go to sleep. She's tired, right? Teddy Jaws. Yo, sorry, John? Yawns, I think. I think that's supposed to be a yawn. That's a J. Yawns. <laughs> Maybe tomorrow will be better. She might be able to get away from this industrial area into something nicer. She really wishes that she had a bed or something. She considers sleeping on the bed in the stinky room, a name that she has given to the room with the red steel pillars. But that smell... It would take a lot of convincing to get her to sleep in there, even with the apartment at the ready. Teddy walks into the central hall, props herself up against the wall, and goes to sleep. Now, at noon... Teddy bolts upright, suddenly wide awake. What was that? She never sleeps deeply anymore. That part of her life is over now. She's always alert, even in sleep. She sits for a second, craning her neck... Craning? Cracking, maybe, her neck, trying to figure out what woke her up, but nothing happens. Her eyes starts to droop, and she leans back against the wall once more when she hears it. It sounds like someone is walking outside trying not to make a sound. The way a child might sound tiptoeing to their parents' bed at night. Teddy listens carefully. She knows that sound, but hopes that she's wrong in her suspicions. Um, go back... No, let's check it out. Teddy feels completely wired, awake like she has never been before. She looks outside where the sun is shining down merciless, mercilessly. If she's spotted now, it would be the end of her. Teddy gets up, makes sure to make as little noise as she can. She doesn't like this one bit, but there's nothing for it. But there's nothing for it? Well, maybe nof she can nothing she can do. She sneaks over to the door, her heart pounding in her throat, trying not to let her mind get the better of her. It's going to be fine. It's probably nothing. Teddy crouches at the door, making sure that she is out of sight of anyone looking in from the outside. She peers to the window and her heart sinks through her chest. At the corner of the building, just visible from her vantage point, she can see one of the horrors standing completely still. Teddy quickly ducks back down out of sight. Not again. Not here. Teddy starts to hyperventilate. She can feel her breath against the mast, hot and moist. This is bad. This is really, really bad. Outside, Teddy can hear the horse starting to move. The horse have an odd way of moving, like a snake ready to pounce. They will stand impossibly still for much too long, surveying their surroundings and then suddenly move noiselessly from one spot to the next. That is, if they don't spot you. If they see you, they give relentless pursuit, not stopping until they have you in their grasps. Teddy has seen people try and outrun them, but it is to no use, they are both faster and stronger than us. It always ends the same way, bloody and lethal. The only respite is the night. Their behavior changes at night, they no longer move as they do during the day. They still react to sound, they still give chase, but at night they move as though wading through water, each step de deliberate but slow. You can outrun them or outrun them at night, you can hide from them at night, you can get away at night. The night has become Teddy Solus. Uh, wait, Teddy Solus her? What? Solus, her safe zone. She feels vulnerable here, in the daylight, scarred out of her wits. So scared, not scarred. What did I say scarred? It's, okay, scared. She peers out the window again, hoping be beyond, hoping beyond hope that... It was moved on. It has moved on. It hasn't. It is standing at the corner of the building, craning its neck as if listening for something. Teddy stares at it, then 
uh, they truly are terrifying. The horrors look like they were put together ha haphazardly by an uncaring god. Limbs randomly stuck where they don't belong and features distorted into wild caricature, caricatures, 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 whatever, you know, caricatures of normalcy. That's hard word at this hour. Teddy starts to feel sick. This always happens when she tries to look at them for too long. There is something about them that remains unsettling, no matter how used to them you get. She slumps back down into the concrete, unwittingly joistling some broken glass at her feet. Ooh, not good. Fuck! Teddy goes cold. She can hear her heart beating against her chest so loud that it threatens to bust her chest wide open and her palms have suddenly gone very clammy. She doesn't dare look outside, but she can hear the soft pitter-patter of the horror approaching the door. It stops and Teddy can see the silhouette of the horror cast a shadow on the concrete in front of her. Damn. Teddy can hear its slow, methodical breathing as it stands just above her looking into the building. The sound reminds her of an engine winding down. Teddy feels her inside go completely liquid as the moments drag on. It stand, it's standing just above her with murderous intent. She knows that it won't hear her, they never do. The, sorry, they won't eat her, sorry, they won't eat her, they never do. They seem content to just end lives for no other reason than the pleasure of it. Teddy stares at the shadow etched into the floor in front of her, willing, uh, willing it to move. Suddenly, Teddy hears a crash off in the distance. The horror reacts immediately, Teddy sees the shadow turn sharply, it lets out a low hiss and bolts off into the distance. Teddy sits there for a second, frozen and terrified into, uh, to her core. She doesn't dare move for fear that it will come back. Get up. Teddy chides herself for being so weak. She needs to get up. She needs to hide and soon before it comes back. Teddy doesn't seem able to. Get up now. She whispers to herself barely audible and starts to stretch her legs. She can do it, she tells herself. Teddy gets to her feet slowly and peers out of the window. The horror is gone, having given chase to whatever made that noise earlier. Teddy can feel the sweat inside of her mask start to dribble, start dripping down her face. It feels cold and calming in a way. I need to hide. Oh, uh, okay. Like where? Back in the room? Back here? Teddy takes a breath. This is not going to be pleasant. However, she knows that this is the only place that the horror will not be able to follow. Still, she is dreading the smell which, even out here in the hallway, is potent to say the least. Teddy takes a couple of deep breaths. Where is... There's, there's a bed in there. Think about the bed. The attempt to calm herself down actually works somewhat. The prospect of somewhere comfortable to sleep is... Nice. Still, Teddy stalls for another minute before taking a deep breath and heading into the stinky room. Sleep in the stinky room or keep looking? Uh, well, it's noon, so let's sleep. However much Teddy has uh, steeled herself is not enough as the smell hits her like a ton of bricks. She has to remind herself the what is in wait outside to not run out screaming. You can get used to it. It's just a smell. Teddy knows this is bullshit, but she clings to the idea regardless. She knows that the rest of the day is going to be hard. At least the dark is comforting. Comforting. She reasons as she walks deeper into the stinking room in search of the makeshift bed. Once at the bed, she lays down and tries her best to get comfortable. It is better than the floor, she has to admit, but not by much. Second night. Teddy lies awake staring into the darkness, willing herself to sleep to no effect. She is surprised by just how comfortable the bed is. Comfortably, uh, comfortability she had not expected to find. However, this did nothing to help her sleep because of the, all the stink. That smell, exactly, yeah. Teddy thought it would get better during the day, that she would get used to it. She did not. 
The only thing keeping her from getting up and walking out was the thought of the horror waiting outside. I should... I should get up. Groggily, groggily, Teddy forces herself to get up. She feels more tired than she's, she has in a long time. Taking her time, she grabs her backpack and walks to the door of the hideout and stops, staring into the dark, into the blackness. She can see nothing out there, nothing at all. She's having a hard time getting herself together enough to move on. Some evenings are hard like that. When the weight of everything seems too heavy to carry and just standing up feels like a Herculean task. Teddy tries hard not to spiral. Not to think about all the people she'll never see again, all the places that she can't go back to, all the things she has lost. The woman threatens to bury her alive if she lets it. Standing there, staring at the door, everything suddenly feels too overwhelming to deal with. You need to leave. She tells herself this over and over again, trying to will her legs into submission, but nothing happens. You need to leave. Her tone is harder now, more firm, but nothing's happening. The grief and sadness have a hold on her now. It seems that there's nothing she can do. She stares at the door in front of her, trying to make her mind go blank. This is her final defense when the malaise takes so Malaise? No, that's... I don't know. Malice? No. Malaise? I don't know. Teddy prefers, prefers to nothingness? Wait, prefers to nothing, that's the sadness. The nothing helps her stay alive. Whoa, what the hell? The flash came so fast that Teddy was unsure it was, it, if she saw it at all. If it wasn't for the afterglow etched into the, her retina, she would have believed that she saw... Uh, she, she would have believed that she hasn't seen anything at all. I think that's what it's supposed to be. Teddy shakes her head and refocuses on the door. Whatever that was... It brought her away from herself. She stands up a bit more straight, trying to hone in on what she just saw, but whatever it was, it's gone now. Teddy shakes her head again, clearing it off uh, cobwebs. She has been standing here for long enough. This can't go on. She picks up her bag, which is feeling remarkably light. She must be running low on supplies. What the hell? She's just about to move. When it happens again, the light is back. It is only there for a second, but that is long enough for Teddy to know that she did not make it up. The light is really there. Teddy takes a couple of steps closer to the door. Whoever is making that happen is out there somewhere, but she can barely see in the darkness. Teddy ducks down and crawls the rest of the way over to the door. Making sure to be as quiet as she can, she squats by the door so that her body is just below the window. You wouldn't be able to see her if you were looking in from outside, from the outside. She peers out and her heart sinks. The whore is standing in the middle of the street just beyond the door. It is just standing in the dark, staring at the building, its large unseeing eyes barely visible in darkness. It seems to Teddy that it is staring right at her. But she knows better. They can't see in the dark. They can only wait for the light to appear. The flash is confused, Teddy, because clearly this didn't come from it. So where did they come from? Have they figured out how to conjure light where there is none? What could mean? That could mean true death. Teddy is starting to spiral once more when she sees the light again coming from somewhere beyond the horror. It shines like a beacon in the blackness and is gone almost as soon as it appears. It takes Teddy a second to get used to the darkness again, but when she does, she notices that there is a shape just beyond the horror. It looks smaller than normal, but clearly there, contrasted against the black night. The person once again flashes the light and this time, the horror seems to take notice. It starts turning slowly to the direction of the visitor. Teddy freezes. She doesn't know this person, but she feels compelled to help. Still. The visitor could be dangerous and it is a high risk take. If the whore notices Teddy, then she is definitely dead. Teddy stalls and all the while the whore starts to move slowly towards the visitor. Ah, to be continued. Alright, so, uh, okay. So everyone, that was the magnet first night. 
the a little bit horror themed visual novel point and click um, hybrid game from uh, Arty Farty Games that's uh, on itch.io right now so it's in development hopefully we'll uh, get to see updates on it uh, soon but uh, for now you can check out this this build and you know if you know anyone who wants to uh, who'd be interested in playing it you know you can uh, find it on itch.io to the link in the description below it's available for windows and mac os and it's available for free or you can give one two three five ten dollars however much you like uh, you know to support um, the makers of the magnet i mean i, I kind of wish it, there was a bit more to the point and click part like yeah, like more items that you can look at to you know find out more about the world but maybe that's planned for later on for first night i mean it's it's depressing what teddy's going through but we'll have to see if she survives for now uh, the first night uh, of the magnets it's available as i mentioned for itch uh, sorry for windows and mac os on itch.io and you can check it there to the link in the description thanks so much everyone for watching if you like this video please give it a thumbs up really quick and if you like what I do here, consider subscribing. That would be actually immensely, immensely helpful. If you could subscribe, tell other people about the channel, just spread the word and uh, check out the back catalog too because there are over 2,000 videos at this point. So you'll definitely discover new indie games there. Uh, and, you know, it's, um, you know, just you just have to look. You just have to look and, you know, and uh, find cool new things to play so again uh, check it out also if you can take half a minute to see the ways to which you can support me uh, there's a creator tag for the epic game store there's the humble store link and there's a fanatical link so if you use any of those three stores please please consider you know uh, making purchases that also support me and the channel it costs you absolutely nothing you don't pay more if you use those links and or the tag so please if you can use those so we can uh, continue doing this and make another 2000 videos and you know expand and do, do more interviews and more live streams because you know there's uh, something for everyone on the channel so uh, check it out thanks again everyone for watching and until the next time we see each other i'm gonna say well fuck and uh, have an awesome day